Good evening, everyone. This is the uh, Finance Committee meeting on September 27th in the uh, community room of the police station tonight. Um, the Finance Committee will continue uh, to function until December when the new council is sworn in. And at that time, the present Finance Committee will no longer exist and it'll be replaced by a Finance Committee made up of a subcommittee of the council. Um, they may appoint uh, community members if they so choose, but those members will not have a vote on their finance committee. And it's unclear as to the number of people who will serve on that committee. Uh, however, before November 1, our role as the present finance committee is to develop the budget guidelines for next year which are due to the town manager, the library director, and the school superintendent. So tonight we're going to begin drafting the guideline language. Um, just the language, we will not have any numbers to put in until after the managers a meeting with the uh, four boards on October 18th. Um, we want to thank Amherst Media for all the continued coverage uh, for our finance committee meeting. So with that, we will begin our meeting. Um, the, the first item on tonight's agenda is news affecting the budget. Is there any? Well, um, I've got a little bit of news on three budgets. Uh, fiscal year 18, which we just closed. Um, financial statements are done. The auditors are starting Monday to audit uh, fiscal year 18 for us. and. Um, I have submitted the free cash balance sheet to the DOR, so I'm awaiting their calls for questions and stuff. How much is that? Don't know yet. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm, I don't think I'm going to throw a number out. Okay. Until, <laughs> That's okay. Until it's actual, because sometimes people take that number and go with it. For fiscal year 19, we're in the, pro we're in the process, everything's going as it should be. Um, no surprises yet. And um, the assessor and I have been diligently working to set a tax rate, and we hope to have that by the end of October, beginning of November. Will that go up the new tax bills? Yes. Mm -hmm. Aren't the new tax bills due November 1, or is that for this year? That's this year. It's the fourth quarter. That's the last oh, quarter. Oh, that's the last quarter. So the new. Okay. Right. So this will be, get, this will be for the tax bill starting in January. Yes. Okay. Right. And on um, fiscal year 20, we're at the very beginnings. We're just starting our projections. We don't have any numbers yet for you. Hence why the numbers have not been updated in your budget guidelines yet. Right. They won't be for a couple of weeks at least. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty much all the news I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, uh, Joe. Do we know the, the current mill rate or tax rate? Do you know what that is? No. Oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Now, also, did you, uh, how's the search for the new finance director going? Any uh, candidates? It's in process. I know they've gotten some candidates. I haven't, I'm not part of the interview committee. Oh, you're not? Okay. Um, so it's, I'm not sure exactly how many. I think we have about a half dozen. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So who is on the search committee? I'm not sure. I think Sean McDonald from school is. Um, not 100% sure. It would be. Uh, I kind of set myself away from it. Okay. Uh, Radway? I'm not sure if she's actually on it. Okay. I don't know who the committee is. Okay. Maybe you could, if you find out tomorrow, email us and let us know. It would be interesting. Sure. I'm okay. sure it'll be great people. Always. <laughs> I was thinking about applying for the job. They're but, finance director? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I thought it'd be cool. But I just don't think I have the, back, the right background because you're really looking for someone in like municipal finance. I think you need someone who really specializes in that. But I, I have finance background. Right? Shouldn't have applied yeah. anyways. Yeah. That's what they tell me. There you go. Mm -hmm. Never know. Maybe the search. Maybe the, it'll be a failed search and then I'll apply again. <laughs> Or I don't know when it closed, so, or if it closed. I have not been paying attention. I've literally yeah. not been paying attention. Do you know who's on the committee? No, we no. just went through that. <laughs> I know. <I'm> <laughs> You're just seeing if she slips up on that one. That suddenly lists six people. For a second. I thought it was 
try to add a little levity. Yes. You want to apply too? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, well, we'll we'll find out. Maybe when when uh, if the search is still open, that might be interesting too. But but I know that there is a need to do that. Um, you know, to to find someone for that position. Okay. The uh, the, the next item is going over the draft of guidelines. Last year. Um, this is last year's letter to the um, to select board, to the uh, school committee, and to the Jones Library trustees. So we, we sent these out, and uh, what I've done is I've gone through them, highlighted numbers that I could see immediately needed to be changed, and you may see others. Uh, and then last year we did talk about um, some language that we wanted to change. And what I did this year is I went through and kind of edited where this would be the transition to the new uh, council. Uh, because obviously um, these have to be, the guidelines have to be to the, the, uh, the, the library, schools, and the town manager by the 1st of November, and the election isn't until the 4th, I believe. The sixth. The sixth. Sixth. Oh, the 6th. Yeah. And swearing in, I believe, is the 4th of December. Okay. So they're not going to um, have a lot of time to do guidelines, and according to the manager, they've already started the budget process, and I know the schools have too. Um, and the library, as you know, is finished with their budget by December every year. Um, so th this just just sets some guidelines and obviously the council when it comes on can say whatever they want. They can change it, <laughs> yeah. set other guidelines. I mean this is just to give people some guidance. And I've tried to indicate here that this is kind of how we've been going along for a number of years. We haven't changed much uh, other than updating the number. So it's open to the floor now. I Damn. did have one, uh, one, probably the significant question is, okay. since this was a draft of guidelines, right. are all the numbers and percentages from last year's, yes. or did someone update them no. to what we think they might be for a point? No, so all no. The numbers everything are, is from so last year. If it says it's decreased by right. 2.6, that's last year's number, right? right? everything. No. last year's yes. okay. guidelines. The, I did put, you know, preliminary fiscal year 2020, uh, but everything else is right. the same. So they would be updated accordingly, already. Right, and actually as I'm looking at that, um, that second paragraph, operating budget should be developed with an increase in the town support of 2.5 or less. I left that in there. I don't know that we would change that, but that, that probably should be highlighted too. Mm -hmm. That probably that whole paragraph would be looked at because again the elementary school uh, with the charter assessment and choice mm -hmm. I don't know what percentage that would be on the town this year it's been 0.5 percent okay. uh, of an adjustment uh, from the elementary budget because of the choice and charter right and so and I charter. don't know if those figures are going to come in similar to last year and it would be about the same percentage? Um, I think Choice and Charter has come in very favorably this year, so you might see the school actually having 2.5% um, because we calculate the school's 2.5% on their base. Okay. So we take their base times 2.5% and whatever uh, we use the previous, I believe we used the previous, Sean will have to, to um, confirm this, but we use the previous year's choice and charter numbers, mm -hmm. both what we're charged and then what we're getting in receipts. And we take that net and that's what we subtract to adjust the school. Okay. Because those are school expenses. Right. So this year, I think the numbers are coming in a lot very favorable. So there isn't that much of a change. So the two, they're getting the two and a half percent. And I 
So we're working on it right okay. now. Okay. So, I don't have so that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. So that whole paragraph needs to be. Mm -hmm. Wait, you say this year you mean FY eighteen no. or FY nineteen or twenty or twenty? We're in FY nineteen right now. Right. 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 Um, okay. And I, it was partly related to what you just indicated when you're meeting with the assessor and so on. Uh, do you have a sense of the impact of the new growth this year for FY20? My recollection is that last year there was positive new growth, but it was only a portion of the new structures coming in. And then this coming year we'll see another benefit. This year 20. for 2019, which Correct. we're about to set the tax rate, right. and new growth is not certified yet, so that's okay. still in the process. It's all part of the tax rate. For this year, we're looking at about 830 for 2019, not 2020. Right. And so what's for it? FY20? No. For this is right now. I talk in fiscal years. Right. Okay, but that's, well, that was my question because, like, you. Just before you said this year, but you meant FY20. That's I just want to be. No, she said FY19. No, she did say. The it. fiscal years are always based on the year it ends. No, I I know I okay. understand that, so but for fiscal year 19, yeah. which ends, which ends June, June 30th, 30th 20, yeah. 2019. 2019. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> testing me. No, 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 no. I just I just. Of course, I guess. It's, go. it's good to be clear. So, so in other words, the money that's coming in this year is for FY19. Yes. Which is about 800. Which about 830,000 is what 30. we're hoping yeah. for, yes. And last year was 300 and some thousand, right? I don't know. It was last year the year we had a million because of Verizon? I believe last year we had a million. Oh, but we're was. talking about new growth. New growth. We're talking about just new like growth. Like 350, or at least that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, you're talking about new growth, right? I am, and my my recollection was that the 830 was the assumption that the a piece, not all, but a piece of the one East Pleasant yes. Street was coming on, and that we should expect more in FY20 than what we projected in FY19. I was just curious to know whether that was going to be in your calculations of the tax rate. Well, that's a question for the assessor. Oh, yeah. So he I mean, knows exactly did. what it right. is. Okay. So I'm not, I know it's, I, I know when he's pleasant is a portion of that. I don't know where, where it falls. I, okay. Okay. For the audience, when we talk about fiscal years, and we're talking this year about fiscal year 19, it is the date that the fiscal that the year ends, the fiscal year ends, which is June 30th, 2019. So we're in fiscal year 19. Because that's 18 and 19 together. So it's always the last year that we're talking about. So the next year's budget will be FY20, which will be 19 and 20. Half, we have which to work in we are half years. On. Yeah, the budget we're working on now is for um, July 1, 19 to June 30th, 20. Okay. And these are the guidelines we're working on. Okay, so why don't we just kind of go through paragraph by paragraph. So we know that this part about what percentage we would be allocating to the uh, three departments in three areas, uh, we'll, we'll be getting more information um, on the 18th of October. And then those, the next paragraph, the same way, we will know how much. Then in the revenues, um, again, there will be some projections there. Um, but I think the part where we say the second largest source of revenue is state aid. State aid, um, that I'm assuming that's the same. It's going to be the same, Sonia? Or will new growth be? So oh, no, state is second or second. Okay. The second largest. The Not second the largest source. Okay. The first largest is. Um, okay. Tax. The first is the is um, property tax. Property tax. Right. Okay. So that top paragraph on two, 
Um, it tells when those decisions are made. Uh, the governor in January uh, 2019, and then the, the legislature follows. Okay, anything new there? Okay, the next Can paragraph. Can I back up to the first sure. paragraph, which is part of the reason my question on the revenue side? Okay. Um, I think this committee should recognize the impact of growth for the fiscal health of the town. Okay. Do you have some suggestions? And I wanted to have some language in here that reflected that. Okay. And that's why I was asking the questions. All right. Because okay. we're allowed to go up 2.5%, but because of the growth, we might have more revenue coming in, and that's positive for the town. Ergo, it might affect our budget decisions like it did last fiscal year. And uh, when we say this revenue is stable and predictable, I'm not necessarily sure that's a true statement. Uh, because it did and it might increase if we have more new growth projects which are on the, the block right now in downtown Amherst. And I think we need to somehow reflect that, that that is positive for the town. And I'm not quite sure how to do that. But in our guidelines, I. I would suggest we reflect that kind of language somehow. Maybe in that sentence, this, this revenue is stable and predictable and increases with new growth or something. I think I think in that sentence is where yeah, it well, could however, be just something. Uh, Due to the increase in new growth? This revenue is advantageous to is stable citizens and of Amherst? Well, so we're assuming, if you do the math, it says the largest revenue source of new property was expected to increase by 3.6%, reflecting the allowable 2.5 increase plus new growth. Does that ergo mean that new growth represents 1.1%? No, it doesn't work out that way. Um, I mean, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, and I don't have my without new too. growth. The increase might not be 3.6 percent; it might be X. I don't know what X mm -hmm. is, okay. and so on. I mean, I, 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 so somehow, I'd how like about to new do growth it. represents an appreciable part of this, or something? Or I don't know, know if, if David could give us. Okay. So why don't we say that? Uh, we'll let Sonia work on this language with David, <clears throat> but we know this is one area that we would like some. And this <clears throat> is all estimates too. Oh, so I understand. Remember that. Right. So these percentages are change the whole process. I mean, right. this is our best guess, looking at trend and looking at um, our indicators reports, trying to come up with our best guess of what we're going to have. I mean, two and a half on last year's levy, yeah, that's a no-brainer. You do that one. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah well, last year. Right. Because that's what we could do. Right, right. That's so, part. But the rest of, it, rest of it is really unpredictable. We don't know today what new growth is. We have good guesses on what it is, but well, we do and we don't. We right. do know the piece that was uh, that was not coming due in fiscal 19, but would rather come due in fiscal 20, in my recollection from David. That we do know, that, that from one East Pleasant Street particularly. Right, now we And we do know, well, we don't know, but we can guess perhaps what that building that might go up by the Lord Jeff, Spring Street. and I don't know, whenever those come on, mm -hmm. There might be some projections that, would, from a budget point of view, we might put in. So I think I, for one, would like to understand that better, and I think it would be helpful to reflect that value to the town in somehow in here. And I don't know if we can do that tonight, but if this so is a draft, that tonight. would be my suggestion that we maybe put our arms around a little bit. So I'm, I'm following what you're saying. So the new growth, though, <clears throat> from for last year was only for a half a year because it didn't come on for the whole year. The new growth it, was for many projects. It wasn't just one East Pleasant. One East right. Pleasant okay. was a portion of it. Right. We always um, we always put in an estimate on the medium amount of six hundred thousand dollars to start off our projections, and okay. that's just you know people adding porches, people doing upgrades to their house, some new buildings and stuff that kind of happens on a regular basis. It's when we have bigger projects like one is pleasant, then we can count on a little more new growth or right. count on a little 
and on that. So there's always some part of new growth. Okay, but when you're year. when you're looking at the new growth, and it's part of it, but it's but you can't count that revenue or you can't start taxing it until it's on. It has to be certified with the Department of Revenue. Okay, so we're usually looking. I would say then then what was last year? We only had a certain percentage. But once it's on, you have that whole year. So that makes the difference between a... a it does get added to the base for next year. Right. Okay. So we'll let you, we'll let you look at that and... Which is why I said I'm not sure about the 3.6% and what that yeah. means. Right. Sometimes that projection sheet is taking the difference from what was our total last year and what is our total this year, but the stuff got added to the base last year, so it's... I got to see where that percentage is coming from before right. I want to. Right. Because I know he, he plugs in every year, sort of a placeholder for what new growth has been, right. and we expect it might be the same, right. and so on. We do mean. But that. when we expect a bigger new growth because of some big projects, we might increase that expectation higher. That was all I was trying mm -hmm. to sure to get at, and I think we should. I, for one, I think that would be helpful in this. We also know that there is another project after that that's going to happen. Um, what well, one? The where uh, Bertucci's. That's being held up for a year. No, I know. But what I'm saying, if this is this is all projection, I mean, there's right. and then I mean, across the street. The way, yeah. yeah, there's there's two and then across the street from that too. And there's my house too. And there's your house. An addition. And when do my taxes get adjusted? So I put an addition. On your house, what? No yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be about a million. No. So well, well, <laughs> when does that tax adjustment actually occur? So my project's almost done. That uh, We added this new addition to our house. So when do I see that reflection in my tax? Fantastic. Do you purchase that question? Don't you remember well, his whole permits, presentation? Yeah. Kind of. It was like when, a, they, yeah. when they sign off on the inspection permits. Oh, they, okay. So, so, okay, that's an area that... Um, that, I've we'll look, time. This is no just time. a draft for tonight, no but uh, where we want to make okay, some, I know. some I, I choices. Just, so that, I would just flag that as okay, something Okay, we'll, to we'll think look about. at that okay. one. Uh, all right, then the next page. It's just pretty straightforward where the money comes from. and. Uh, I did the last sentence there on the second paragraph about ambulance receipts. Uh, where? The second, last sentence in the second paragraph, mm. uh, not the last sentence, the second to the last sentence, where it includes ambulance receipts. My, my question was uh, the impact of Hadley no longer. Uh, good, good point, yeah. Rock somehow it's trying. going to affect things. Right. 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 We're going to have fewer receipts because we've outsourced or have had these not. We, we have a few you know, we have a few challenges for 20. We have, um, we no longer are self-insured, so we no longer have the help um, right. claims trust fund. So the town and the school have had employees that were charged personally to the health claims trust fund. So that's going to have to go somewhere. So that'll go into the general fund. There's, um, we have, of course, the council expenses, because we didn't put that in anything in 19, and we had to think about that for mm -hmm. 20 because that doesn't exist there now. So all that new growth is going to be taken care of it. There goes well, the new growth. <laughs> yeah, but it goes to then, then it's run up temporarily. Right. It's how it spends its money, right? So. <laughs> okay. I don't want to cut this chair. It's going to be hard. Okay. Good. Yeah. So you always have this much fun? Pardon? No. We always have oh, we're just trying to entertain you. <laughs> we're <laughs> succeeding. Um, I lost my train of thought. What were you asking me? The ambulance receipts. The ambulance, ambulance, ambulance yeah. receipts. So um, uh, we don't, we're no longer um, providing service to the town of Hadley with our ambulance anymore. That's about 20%. So Hadley was paying us $140,000 a year. Um, fees for us doing that plus whatever call revenue that was brought in and that's probably about another 300,000 so right another in, wow right so and we're not cutting positions you mean for we're insurance no we're talking about 
ambulance revenue coming in. Uh, no, I, I know, but the revenue coming in where you say it's another 300, that's from insurance we collect from the people we pick up in Hadley. Yes, for the runs, yes. Right, for the rides. So, so right. So mm -hmm. we're, you know, 400,000, 450,000 that we are now gonna have to pick up as well. But they still have a heavy load, so. What they do. Was the 300? The 300 is the yeah. ride insurance. Sure. insurance. But we don't know yet. I know the, the contract. Is the, the money you get from the insurance companies for the oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. For your medical insurance yeah. that pays for you know, oh. Oh. insurance. Oh. Oh. Right. That's where the money's coming from. But there is still some pickup in Hadley. The ambulance still uh, mutual aid picks up in That's Hadley. The, they the call them. That's the yes. money that and they have. paid us. So, so, and and my understanding is that the contract that was was written is that after so many mutual aid calls for both Amherst and Northampton, then Hadley has the town has to pay for those in addition to what they get I, out of insurance. I can't answer that. I don't the town of Hadley has to pay for those. Yes, there's there's a maximum mm -hmm. number of mutual aids calls. You can check that out though for us. I believe that. So, in effect, four hundred fifty thousand was budgeted in ambulance fund. Right. Uh, that if it if we're not changing staffing and other expenses to support the ambulance slash fire department, those four hundred fifty funds have to come out of somewhere else. Right. Like right. A town meeting to vote for public safety always had. Taxation and in right, so that would be under two point something. Okay, right. say that again, more time. At town meeting, when the vote came up for public safety, mm -hmm. the appropriation was taxation, mm -hmm. certain amount of money, and a certain amount of money from ambulance receipts. Okay, so the receipts are going back by about 450, and thus taxation probably will have to go up to keep a level of service, right. And I don't know if you recall, but um, in March we went from doing billing for ambulance in-house to outsourcing it on this company, Comstar, and that happened in March. So we are pull pulling together what trend we have from that to see if there's any savings or more revenue coming in because we have a third party doing this. That hasn't, we haven't been able to, we haven't been able to do that comparison yet. We don't have enough history yet. Okay, we'll finish with that paragraph. All right, then the next one that's heavily highlighted in yellow is, is my edits to reflect the council. Uh, we, we said before the finance committee may use additional information. At this point, once this is in, the council's going to be dealing with this. So that's as the council, process, as the budget process continues. I just pretty much substituted council for finance committee. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, on that last sentence, I'm not really sure um, of the process for the council if they actually. I'm sure they review the budget, but I don't know if they have any part in the recommendation. And somehow I think this is, at some point the manager gets all of these budgets and it's his budget. But I, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know the wording of the, of the, um, the council in, in terms of what they do with that budget. But I do know something about they can't increase it I believe they can't increase it, but they can decrease it. Yeah, I believe so too. Pardon? I believe so. So um, that whole thing has to be looked at, and I didn't spend time looking at it. Do you know if, if they actually recommend the final budget? It's their, it's their finance committee, a subcommittee of the council, that's going to be doing this coming up with the, the budget. So I don't know if they have to run that by the whole council. Um, it would seem that they would have to, and then they would say this is okay. But that's only the town portion. 
and then what happens to the school and the other? Do you have any? I probably should look that up. Yeah, I mean, it's in, I've read this, but I can't. Remember. Okay, so that's that's a, that's that's a an area that we need to look at. Yes, yeah, so there, but no later than April first, the proposed budgets adopted by the school committee, regional school committee, letter to me shall be submitted. So the council doesn't even see those two budgets. Not later than May first, the town manager shall submit the town to the town council a proposed budget for the ensuing fiscal year, including this school and library components, as determined by the town manager. With the company budget and message and supporting documents, the town manager shall simultaneously publish the proposed budget on the town board. board. Okay. And what does their finance committee do? <laughs> Good question. There's not a lot in here about, uh, yeah. oh, here we go. So, public hearing. Finance, the town council is going to be sitting as the finance yeah. committee. Yeah, the finance committee is a sub, sub it's a sub It's a subcommittee of the council. But oh, the question go. is, wh whose budget do they determine? So, the school committee does their own, the library does their own. And I don't know if they have any say in either of those budgets. I think they have final approval just like town meeting did. Yeah. Of those two budgets yeah. also? Yeah, it's the same yeah. process. Yeah. The same process. Just substitute. They have a public hearing. Uh, town meeting for the council or council. But you, did some, you just said something earlier about the manager. Well, the manager, it's the proposed budgets adopted by the Amherst School Committee, Regional School Committee, and the Library Trustees shall be submitted to the town manager. Right. The town manager shall submit to the town council a proposed budget for the ensuing fiscal year, including municipal, school, and library components as determined by the town manager. Which is pretty much what we do now. To town meet the budget book has, has library in there. It has the school pages in there. But it doesn't appear that the council has a say in either the school or the library. Actually, the budget. Lot. A public hearing. Immediately upon its receipt of the proposed budget, the town council shall refer the budget to the town council's finance committee. The finance committee shall hold a public hearing on the proposed budget, providing no less than 10 days notice of such hearing. The finance committee will thoroughly review the budget and make a presentation and recommendation to the full town council within 30 days of referral. The finance committee shall consider any or all questions which it deems appropriate for the person, per purpose of considering the budget. The Finance Committee as a whole shall have authority at any time to investigate the books, accounts, management of the town agency and via a request to town manager, superintendent, library director as appropriate to require officers and employees to be before them. Okay, well, we'll have to, to get that oh. out. The town council shall adopt the budget with or without amendments by June 30th. The town council may delete or decrease any programs or amounts except expenditures required by law, except on the recommendation of town manager. Blah blah. It's, it's here. Okay. So they get to approve the school budget and the library budget. My understanding is, look at last year. Just substitute town council for town meeting mm -hmm. in terms of the authority to approve budgets. That's yeah. my understanding. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. All right. I can sit here and read the whole thing, but I can tell <laughs> No, that would not be good. Uh, capital budget and uh, mandatory expenses, that's the same with, um, you know. So let me, before you get to the capital sure. budget, uh, the, we opened this document by saying we are suggesting an increase in the town support of 2.5 percent and then we go on and talk about or less or less right um, and then we talk about things to think about one red then the revenue sources so we talked about the um, new growth impact on revenue and then we talked about the impact on the ambulance fund so basically that's what we're saying we keep the, this all this information in these less these next several paragraphs are to keep this in mind. Town, as you said, your budget is going to be. I mean, basically, that's what right. I'm talking about. Okay. I just try to understand the flow of this thing again. All right. And because this was um, intended to kind of 
let everybody know of you know the library and the schools in the town. Uh, right. These these items that they have to consider in terms of revenue, and then the next big thing they need to consider is the capital budget and and the mandatory right. expenses there. And that we talk about the four major projects. And then our goal was to have a 10% for capital, mm -hmm. and that to continue building those reserves. There's nothing magical about the 10%. I think that's an arbitrary number that the Finance Committee set years ago because we were so low. We were way down, I've forgotten what percentage. you have, you remember? For what? Uh, how much? At one point, our capital fund was. I think it was down to below five. Right. Wow, really? How yes, much? very oh, low. Mm -hmm. oh, those charts were so old, we got rid of them. But we, for a while, we used the charts in the finance committee report to show, you know, the real dip um, back. What was it, 2008? And that that period of time. Yeah. And then, you know, people are saying, well, that's 10 years ago. So, so you get rid of the charts. But so we've, we've worked up to 10, and I think we, we weren't going any higher because it seemed unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Now I think we're, this year we're at 10, aren't we? We're at nine and a half. Nine and a half or 20, you're talking about capital percentage? Yes, of yes. Nine and a half for fiscal year 20 is what we are going to project. Oh, you're not going to do 10? 10? 10 is next year. Yeah, I think Paul's, going Paul wants to, yeah. I think Paul said. Going towards 10. Yeah. Okay. We've been working towards it by using right. half a percent every year. But there's nothing magical in 10. We could make it 11. Sure. Well, that, that's in the financial policies guidelines. We'd have to go back and revisit that. And change right. It if we want to make right. Any changes. We were trying to make it realistic. And back well, then, we speak to the last several census speaks to why 10%. Right. The finance committee has felt 10% is helpful and right. And the right. reason we've been able to build back up to 10 is because we've been having a good new growth figure every year. Right. So that allows us to keep increasing a half percent and the OPEB that we were increasing 100,000 every year. I mean, now Paul's holding that study at 500,000 because he feels it's really important to start tackling some of these large capital projects. But right. that's, you know, that's been part of the whole process all mm -hmm. along. It's built up our reserves. Right. So, any more questions on that? So, in this fiscal 19, it's 9.01. We're suggesting for some 20 going to 9.5. Right? Yes. I couldn't remember this. All right. So, in this case, the 9.5 is not in last year's document. This is a new figure for fiscal 20. Right. Okay. So, the question here is. If we, oh, that's capital, okay. All right, the next paragraph then. So okay. they highlighted 6% over FY19 level, so that's new information too. Is that? Because this was, I haven't updated any of these numbers. So right, I right. Information. So they're, they're, they're highlighted for her either to change the numbers or to check to make sure they're correct. You should have one. Thank you. Here. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Can I keep it? I look so over there and I'm thinking. percent all news. I'll take that for this year. <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, this I, I, I'm looking there and I don't see you have any papers. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think that final paragraph is where we talked about health insurance. And oh, at the bottom of the page? Right. Oh, right, right. right. The shortfall is that. I think we that. need to know what the projections are for health insurance for fiscal. Uh, 20. Mm -hmm. So in effect, for us to come up to our original conclusion that we suggest 2.5, we 
we need some information which we, which we don't have right now. We're working on it. Okay, I know, and I just, that's why this is draft. But we need to, and what should happen is the increase in revenue, particularly the new growth, might help offset that 450 reduction in right. ambulance fees and might offset whatever health insurance increase or not. But once all those numbers are known, we may have to go back and revisit the 2.5 and the math isn't going to work, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because health insurance is in everyone's individual budget. So health insurance is in the town budget for the municipal employees and retirees, school budget for the school right. employees, region budget, library budget. So they're all, health insurance is all in these individual budgets. So they have to, we have to absorb any health insurance increases within our two and a half percent of our number. So it's not the two and a half percent that's the overall budget. Right. It's within the two and a half that we're all allocated. I understand that. Okay. Right. Where retirement stands alone, it's not within all the op operating. But budgets. going from budget to budget, if the health insurance was again going to go up 10%, 10%. Right. Then we may we not be, increase, we may not right. be able to say to the town we have to increase two and a half percent. Or might have to right. be one one and a half percent. Right. Right. That, so we need to know those numbers before we go yeah. back. Okay. Yes. Is there um, your point about the health insurance? You know, being uh, being here and talking a little bit more about it. Is there anything else that we would want to put in the narrative? with new figures. I, mean, I, I understand where you're coming from with the, um, the revenue, and now we look at capital. Anything else there? Okay. You should probably all mark this as draft at the top of this. Right. I just, yeah, if, if I had the, on that computer put draft like you do across things, that would be good. <laughs> okay, um, do you have anything that you want us to add to those particular sections? No. That would be helpful for the new council? No, I do think a lot of people, the public does get really confused about two and a half percent of levy and two and a half percent increase in operating budgets. I think it's like one of the same, and it's really not. And um, maybe if there's a way Where would you put that? An explanation of the levy versus know, the budget. Observation. No, I think it's a good one. Maybe it could be a footnote. Remember, you're, we're going to get people on the um, council who, you know, who are knowledgeable about a lot of things, but the finance part of it. I mean, it. I think it's it the town manager's intent to um, start setting up. Uh, informational sessions for the council and for the general public. So I think he's working on that. It's in his wheels that are spinning. Okay. Because this is going to be critical. I think when people first come on the finance committee, their eyes gloss over with all these <laughs> sheets you give us with the different colors and the different columns and My reading across. And you're saying, <laughs> why, why did I get on this committee? Well, I thought it's just when I come up to you I with a question. I come to work in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, it's, a, it's a lot to learn. So if there's some way we can uh, clarify some of these things and make it simpler just from our own experiences, I think that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. So, okay, are we all through that section now? And on, then we're on to the OPEB. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one's moving along. I think that's pretty easy to explain. Um, and you know, we are contributing toward it. And we have a good um, bond rating because of it. And I don't know that um, 
that I think it's still accurate to say we can't expect any significant help from the state to help with this. It's, it's going to be out of the town's uh, So we're revenues. going to recommend another 500 for fiscal 20. We aren't going to recommend anything more or less, basically, is what we're probably going to do. Right. right. That, that's what Sonia is saying the manager would like to do, oh, yeah. to catch up on everything else that needs to be done. Yep. And you notice South East Street has been newly paved. Mm. Take a ride down. Yeah. Very nice. I know, I've been driving around the roadblocks. Right. Two yeah. years. <laughs> And, and the residents down there are going to ask for bumps pretty soon because now you can do 50 easily down that road. <laughs> but not when you go still into the... Oh, under the two underpasses, right. You yes. have to wait. I live right between those two underpasses. <laughs> <laughs> but it is nice. Okay, reserve funds. Now it says to uh, maintain them between 5 and 15% of the general fund operating revenues. So we'll get new numbers this year for free cash uh, from the state. And the stabilization fund will get figures for that. And then the total reserves, I'm sure we're up, aren't we, over the 12 million? We'll be, we'll be about a 12, 12 million. Remember at um, the annual town meeting, we appropriated two million for free cash to go into the health claims trust fund to help mitigate the run out for the health claims trust fund. And it's getting it with the understanding that we are paying it back mm -hmm. right. through surcharges on our premium. Right. So when we get it back, where are we with the town reserves? Well, this fiscal year end, we're probably going to end up with twelve million in reserves. Okay. So we use two million, and it's getting paid back to. It'll. It goes. It's being as we're collecting revenues. Mm -hmm into the health claims trust fund, it's going into the health claims trust fund. Once we have two million in there, we will transfer it back to the general fund and it will close up to free cash. I can give you an accounting lesson if you want. I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> okay, I'd love it. <laughs> okay. Not on TV. Okay, and um, so I can't remember what the amount is in the in our policies for um, free cash and or for reserves rather. What is do, do we set a percentage? Fifteen for, to five. Set it between five, five to fifteen, 15 but it's over that. Yeah. Yes. But again, right. that's not a magical number either. Right. Remember the Sandy Cooler Let's Plan for the capital projects, right. more major capital projects. Right. And part of that was building our reserves and increasing our capital spending a half a percent of the year until we receive the 10 percent. Maybe this is where we could say that we're at 16.5 percent. We, we might say that, um, that 5 to 15 percent, you know, it's a policy, but we certainly could exceed that, especially in light of the four capital projects. I think, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think the temptation might be to spend another uh, percent and a half on other things. But I don't know, what's the committee's thought? You want to bring that back down to 15? No, I don't. I, I'd like to leave it where it is That's because I, I do yeah. think that if we get those capital projects going, one of the um, thoughts was to, one of the projects would go for a debt exclusion override. Mm -hmm. Another project could be just a bond where you would pay off the principal and interest using money from the stabilization So you, it's possible to have more than one project going if you do it right.
So I think a lot of these questions will be answered after after the eighteenth. The eighteenth, once okay. the town manager has his message, okay, his presentation. Okay, it's just something to think about so that we're ready for that. We'll have we can have two meetings after that before November one. So, okay, then the um, then the next one would be the uh, again requested budget information. And I think this is the yellow part, Tim, is something you talked about last year. Yeah, and, and frankly, I don't think the departments, when they made their presentations, addressed those things at all. I mean, part, part I think, was to be sensitive to what impact the actual growth in this town was. And that paragraph regarding family households was more particularly, I think, uh, directed towards schools right um, but the subsequent sentences in that paragraph were addressed I think towards other departments to when they're projecting their budgets to give us some sense in terms of what the impact of growth or decline has been uh, in a way I think uh, the um, senior center did that mm -hmm. they presented the fact that mm -hmm. older services yeah. The population was growing, and that was putting real stress on their budget, etc. Um, so I, that was partly the intent, but not everybody did that in the presentation. So I think it's so helpful to me put in there. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I, we did get pe the number of people who used the Jones Library, but I don't think it was a breakdown of residents versus non-residents. No, people didn't get that specific. Right. But I think that was also an attempt to allow people to give some impact, or to give us in the, the budgetary impact of, for want of a better term, Amherst free services for right. the use of people from other towns. Right. Um, and again, I'm not sure we really did a good job of doing that. Um, well, we might, um, if you can think of language that would make that clear to the other groups. I think you're right, the schools yeah. give us figures. Um, but we may find a way to ask the others how they do it, or to make it uh, more visible than they have been. Um, okay. It might be interesting also here to ask the schools how many uh, students come from campus housing that's not taxable and but the bank is pretty specific I guess that might be something we could ask them although we won't be here when they come <laughs> we are gone after December but would there be a place in here to um, to ask the town what the agreement is with UMass, any kind of, I mean, they, they give us so much money toward um, service of uh, paramedics on the weekend. Um, and they are, supposedly they give us some money toward the schools. In other words, they're, maybe that's what I'm looking for, the total contribution of the university to the town in terms of money, total contribution from Amherst College, and the total contribution from Hampshire. What those what those all give us in in, in lieu of the fact that they have non-taxable land. Um, is, where would that go here? Well, that comes in the revenue sources. Well, this is request for budget information. But it's part of local receipts. But that's local receipts. Those are, those are uh, right. uh, pilot taxes. Mm -hmm. But they're miscellaneous, so non recurring is what we put it under. Yeah. yeah. But it's not as obvious as I think. I mean, more people have asked me recently about, mm -hmm. you know, what have what has the contribution been from these places, and especially since. We have that information. We have information. In, uh, for all the colleges 
what their contributions are, not only um, in cash, but in kind. So. Okay. I, th I think it's relevant, especially. I don't know if it's something that belongs in here, but that information is available. I'm not sure if it's on the website somewhere. I know I remember helping pulling those numbers together, so I can look into that for you. That would be good. I No, I think it, I mean, it's, since it comes to the town, it would be under information the town would give us, and I'm not sure whose department that would be. But but I do think it should be out there because more people are asking. I'm, I'm surprised about that, but I've had a couple of people ask me recently, well, what do they pay? And I think it's because they've, the endowments of all these colleges have been out. And if you notice the, um, the Democrat who's running for governor came out with a proposal that would tax um, higher ed, uh, private higher ed whose endowments are over a certain amount of money, uh, a percentage that would be used, would go to the state and the state would use it for education. I kind of like that idea. I think it's, all, it's, it's been on my mind because um, Williams, Williamstown, they, they provide um, quite, a, quite a bit of funding for, and they did, they help with the elementary school now, they're helping with, is it a police department? Um, I feel like I read that recently. So it'd be nice to know. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a large amount of money it is. That, they, that they give, and their endowment is less. No? It's not less? Well, I don't know what their endowment is. Their, it's a large their, their endowment money. is over $2 billion? Yeah, yeah. But oh, at Williams? Williams? Oh, yeah. Oh, Williams, yeah. Williams? Williams is, is, so you is similar Williams and Iris are relatively similar. similar. Yeah. Something like $2.5 Yeah. And Hampshire is like... Nothing. I know. It's nothing. It's nothing. It is. Right. And then UMass is state institutions. It's state institution anyway. Yeah. Too. yeah, I mean, definitely yeah. Hampshire and Amherst are... I mean, I don't think it what? affects Amherst. How would you pick... I think that... What you're talking about that legis that piece of legislation? I don't even think it would affect uh, Amherst. Amherst College? No, no, it's, it no it's it's not legislation yet. It's, a, well, it's something his he's proposal on the is to have a tax on, the endowment. on endowments greater than one billion dollars. Right. right. Yeah. So and that would tax that excess and have those monies go to the state coffers. Right. Mm -hmm. And I forget the percentage that it would tax would be, but it would be basically a wealthy institution tax. Yeah, um, yes, it's, pri it's um, private. Yeah, I didn't think it was a billion or more. Yes, it is yeah. a billion. It is, or more. Okay, they must have and changed it would, because before it, it was a be, percentage. Then it would, in this community, would affect Amherst, would, uh, Amherst Smith, uh, Holyoke. Yeah. Um, oh, it's about, yeah. It's yeah. It's Smith, yeah, all those are. Yeah. Not for a million in the state of Massachusetts. Well, the so called well, sure. elite colleges that right. So, yeah. Okay, so if we could have that somewhere, that would be good, but I'm not sure where we so put it. Get on that. As soon as I get through the indicators report. <laughs> well. Okay, somewhere in there. The appropriate place would be on the second page in the uh, second paragraph where it talks about uh, local receipts and other financing source is such as, and it talks about local receipts, motor vehicle exercise fines, blah, blah, blah. you could in, include uh, receipts from okay. educational, and, whatever. And that information. And they, can, they have shared that in the past, and I forget what that number is. So the basic, you know, money, monetary contributions that we get are in my quarterly reports every quarter mm -hmm. of how much we've collected to date and at the end of the June which I just did the quarterly report for the select board, mm -hmm. and it's um, sh posted on the um, accounting website. There, so you could go in there and see miscellaneous is now recurring, and you can see it spells out. It spells out from where. Oh, it's, they did. Yeah. So the information we have the information in many places, and it is public. It's not. Oh, it does say payments to the tax, but that's basically what that means. Okay. Are there a thousand other lines of things on that report? There's a lot of things in that report. That report is very important. I know it. I, I know. There's just so many lines to look at. Okay. Good. We have that there. Um, 
All right. So we requested budget information. That's what we've asked for in the past. And we'll find a way to probably emphasize that. Okay, anything else um, on page four toward the beginning? This is where we do say they have to include health care and contractual salary increases. Looking at that paragraph, um, is this something that the, this is what the manager had said last year. Is this okay for this year? Sorry. He said in addition budget should include expected health insurance and contract and contractual salary increases. New positions must be accommodated within the proposed budget. Is he still going to stick with that? Um, stay tuned, October 18th. Okay. Well, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to move this. <laughs> That's the manager's report. Oh, so, okay. The financial board meeting. Oh, got it. Financial right. indicators. Right. It's on the calendar. So, okay. And then we talk about um, when they put this together, they choose to, I mean, this is put it together in a um, in a way that they're pretty much similar as you read through them as we've done in the mm -hmm. finance committee report. And those are these are the pieces. And the explanation of full-time equivalent. And then we do we do have a budget coordinating calendar, and I don't know how we would word that, but but I'm sure they're going to have a budget coordinating calendar too that's stated in the charter. I think they have some timelines. I think those timelines the timeline are timeline is much quicker in the charter. That is true. And, and and the the issue though is realistically the schools and the library and even the town begin to look at their budgets July one mm -hmm. and begin to put things together um, and they wait then for the guidelines on November one and I the char the charter isn't in sync with that. So I, I don't know. They'll have to resolve that, obviously. It's their issue. But there are state guidelines, too, for when things have to be turned in and when they get information and so forth. So that will be up to them. And it may be more difficult this first year because we're because when the elections are happening, but I think realistically, people will um, will run again. They will they will seek to uh, if if they're not discouraged in the first two years, uh, they they would run again. And I mean, there would be a flow for, for those individuals. You know, they they will have been on. They'll continue to be on. They're running again. I think that schedule will probably be more in keeping with what we have now in terms of the town planning but this year because of when it falls it is off but but I do think um, it will probably eventually be more in line with with the calendar that exists now since the town the school and the library really have deadlines themselves the school for instance has to I believe at least they used to have to let people who they were not going to rehire and know by February 15th contractually. Now that may have changed, it may be later. So, you know, budget planning has to happen earlier for them than, than this um, expedited uh, budget process that's in the charter. 
Can okay. I go back to the question? Sure. Miscellaneous non-recurring. This includes Amherst College and UMass funds received to support the operating budget. It also includes the payment in lieu of hotel, motel taxes included in the strategic agreement with UMass. We have received $131,992 to date from Sonia Aldrich. Yes, but I also like noticed it. that um, when I presented this to the select board, um, Ms. Brewer asked that I um, put in the amounts in the text, and I did, but I think the wrong file got grabbed and put online, and so I noticed that, and I was planning on running and doing that first thing in the morning before anyone noticed. Wait, this is the wrong one? It's right. It's, yeah. it's right. I just added more detail to it oh. after the select board meeting. Oh, okay. and so how much money total? One thirty-one nine ninety-two. That's that is the um, payment. That's the payment in lieu of what, hotel. The hotel. That's the only. No, there's, there's still more. Oh, so there's more. There's that's what more, you added. and I, I added all that oh, okay. detail to the okay. report, but the wrong report got grabbed. Oh, I get it on the website. Okay. So I want to go fix that. I was hoping to fix that before anybody knows. But thank you. Okay. That's great. That is, this is a good report. Yes, there's a lot of information there. And okay. there's financial statements behind it to back it all up. Great. All right. Uh, and the conclusion on this, then we just. I think that's fine. Okay. Basically, thank you everybody for their help. Okay. Good work. If any of you have any thoughts on this, between now and our next meeting or we'll want to add something, um, let me know. Because I think how I see this playing out is that once uh, we get pretty close to the manager's budget, you, you will have figures to put in here. So we're not doing it that night. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that evening after the manager's um, budget presentation, or it's not the budget presentation. He's presenting the fiscal outlook for the town. Right. Um, so once he presents that, we'll have the, those figures and we can work on this afterwards. And then we'd have one more meeting to finalize it. So, <clears throat> but if you have other things you think, other language that you think we need in there, let me know and I'll I'll try to deal with it so we we can work uh, pretty quickly through a draft and make changes. So if you see those now, let me know too. Well, no, I'm. Are we, having, are we going to go over this? Yes. Okay. okay. So we're all set on that then. Oh, uh, and the question I would ask, and I'd probably ask again on the 11th. Um, we the manager's presentation is usually about an hour. Uh, we can either meet immediately after that at 6 o'clock or we can take an hour break and come back at 7 and try to finish as much of the guidelines as possible that night and, and have a draft ready and then meet the following week and finalize it and get it ready to send out. Last year did we take an hour break? Yeah, I think we got we, a sandwich at Subway. I think we right. did, yes. I think we did. I think I bought your sandwich for you. There you go. Then we'll, we're gonna we're gonna go with Joe. He's gonna buy. Yeah. I'll well, buy you all dinner. Normally I don't care. Get First them out is right good. right after that meeting. I mean, the last no. ones went out the end of October. So that's gonna be pretty much the end of October. So what we do is we try to get as much of it together as possible after that meeting, with the new figures, and then and, and make any edits that we see at that point. Take it, look at it, and then finish it up the next meeting. Um, Yes, but usually I'm given time to go in and put in all those figures and everything. You're not going to have time before that meeting to do that? No. Okay. Got your message. Okay. You, you can't do it the hour between? <laughs> Bummer. Okay. So are you saying we're not going to meet after? Or we're just we, still, we, we still do. We, I think you can still just, I mean, a lot of what he says, I mean, we'll, he gives us the Yes, he yeah. gives us the information, so we need to talk about that. And and what do we set as the percentage? Mm -hmm. and, and some of your issues may be well, answered I mean, there, there's too. There's a big wild card. I mean, all, all these things, 
all have to add up right so that everything balances with a two and a half percent increase if one of them is really skewed something else has to give and right we won't know that right right but we would after the meeting and we can talk right. about that right but well, and the ahead. projection that we give at the um, financial indicators report is a very preliminary estimate oh sure of what his it basically, what there, right? yeah, because what happened last year was everything was fine except health insurance increased, and then we found out the new growth would add enough for us to then increase the uh, budget by to three and a half percent. That was two and a half percent. Right, and you know, once, that, we did. once we do that report too, I mean, then we start getting information more concrete numbers like from the retirement board and right. that changes right. and this that projection just tweaks weekly right but I think di different information that we know mm -hmm. um, up until we're getting ready for I think we should time. I think we should think of it as kind of a snapshot like we're going to do the best we can right, right. the time we right. have right. and I think we can make that clear right with the right. new council that this is yep. this is the process as we got through it up to this point right, yeah. right. And I, but I think last year probably was was one of the few years we ever changed anything mm -hmm. that previous years are, are the managers projections and the figures we took from the manager and Sonia were right pretty much on target mm -hmm. and we did not go back and change last year was an exception well, yeah. Four or five years of no drama budgets. Right. That's right. So, so because health insurance was not right. a drama. Right. And last year it was, and then right. we had to just. Right. So I, I think, you know, I think we will be pretty, pretty well set to be able to, um, you know, kind of get as much information together that's pretty accurate. Even though everything is a projection, we say that over and over again that things could change, and they did in January last year so so anyway unless you think of anything else that you want in there this is kind of the the draft will work from uh, and if yeah, you have I mean, it's basically the same boilerplate we've had for the last number of years no we changed it a little bit well, a little bit oh, no but we added some yeah we I would say kind of the the way the figures are set up is true, but I think we added some other things we, we wanted and, and and asked for things that, You're right. that weren't That's in the true. past. That's that, that true. And try to be clear on, on mm -hmm. what it is all these things are. So, okay, we're done with that. Now, um, what I've been thinking of um, is that the, uh, the new council um, are going to come in. Some will have a know what we do and what they do and so forth. But I thought, and I asked Sonia this before, to put aside 13 finance committee reports from uh, town meeting with the orange cover and the JCPC report, 13 of those, and make a packet to give to the new council. And one of the things that could also go in there is, this is how our finance committee functions and you may function obviously very differently but this is what it kind of took so I sent a copy of that to you how it functions and if you can see anything else that would be fine yes so I've only really gone through this budget process once um, okay but I and I but I keep getting tripped up this is the second page second okay paragraph which one? Second, second page, page, second paragraph. Okay. Okay. So the manager's budget is presented in January. Right. The school budgets are completed in February. Right. And the library is completed in December. That previous December. Okay, yeah, that's that. So I'm that, sorry. You know, I, I tried to rewrite it like okay. several times and send it to you, but I okay. just couldn't quite yeah. get it right. It's probably why it's written like that because I couldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I, I okay. I did spend a little time, but I just okay. So we'll work on that. But they they get it finished and it's great. But the the um, we're in you know a region for um, 
for the 7 through 12, and there are deadlines there for their town meetings, and to my knowledge, they're not going to change their annual elections at the end of April, beginning of May, to coincide with Amherst elections in November. They're still going to have their own annual town meetings, and they're going to have their budgets and their towns. They're not cities, as we now are called a town. So, um, so there's going to be some uh, times that have to be worked out. There's also something about notifying the towns, except for capital, I think, so many days before their town meetings, because there is a formula for capital projects for the regional schools, but they, they have to let the towns know their percentage of, of that cost for the next budget um, by so many days before their town meeting. So anyway, um, kind of that's why these, these are in there. That's why those are the deadlines as of now. Now they may change it completely. <coughs> many people just thought it might be helpful for them to see how a finance committee could work mm -hmm. and they could change however they want to. But well, I, I would suggest, just as a minor point, but for the town liaison, maybe town staff liaison, because I'm not exactly sure. I didn't, my first reading didn't know what you meant oh, until I read sure. the description. So that's signed in this case. And it was. Uh, Right. What's his name? Fuller? Fuller. <laughs> Before him. Uh, and maybe who knows who it's going to be. Uh, That's a good point. I had Sonia's name in there and she told me to take it out. Right. Because it may not be her. Right. So, that's good. You're changing liaison to staff? Uh, oh, town staff liaison. Right. Oh, oh, right. Oh, I see. You could. So, up above here. Where's that? That's Look. a minor point, but town staff liaison. Okay. Good. Anything else? I presented this to the, the you know the town meeting committee that was established toward the end of town meeting that was going to uh, research different articles oh, and that, yeah. and they invited me to come and tell them how we functioned, and I think some of them were overwhelmed by what went into the work we do. Um, I mean, it, it works out and, and people enjoy doing it, but, but it does require time. I would include under finance committee members, uh, the, I think that's good to let them know that we each oversee or participate with the various several select town functional areas. Right. I think somewhere in there, I'm not sure how at the moment to write it, but we also attend, attend their oh, meetings. Yeah. You attended anything lately, Joe? No. Oh. Because you didn't really say that. Nothing. Okay. You imply it by cover slash watch, but somehow. Yep, we you're right. participate in them through attending meetings and so forth. Yes, because we provide information. My meetings so are all picked to site for the. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think that whole thing is just. I think it's just it's banned and dissolved. So I'm off the hook. They're dissolved. Uh, I don't. I don't yeah. think it's disbanded. I think they. Oh, well, they, they I, certainly haven't met. There's nothing uh, going on there. Well, I think I think it's because and my understanding is they're. They're still trying to find a site, but yeah. you can't do anything if you don't have a site. Yeah, that's why we stop. That's why they stop. But they do have. But they do have a study. Yeah. They do have. They a, do right, right. Right. They have all of that. Yeah. The only thing that prevents them from going forward is to find a piece of property. That's right. And that's exactly where it was left. And right. That, that was our last meeting, which was whatever nine months ago, so last spring. Right. But I think there's still work behind the scenes. But yeah, I'm well, just guessing. Yeah, they're not involving me in that. No, I mean, there's no point in meeting if you don't have a yeah, site. Right. 
So, okay. Anything else on this one? Okay. I think that was a good. That's a good document. Yeah. So do I. I think it's great. Uh, even if they do something completely different. They well, they may change know. timelines in that, and they may say we can do without this or we can do that. But at least it, it does tell them what what's involved. Yeah. Okay, and the budget process calendar, um, I thought also was a good timeline mm -hmm. for when things are done, what months to look at, and you know, date and who and what. I don't have where. So again, does the manager's budget presentation still remain January 16th? I don't believe so. In the charter? No, it's in the charter. It's later. What is that? He has to. He has to. He has to um, give them by May 1st. Is that what's in the charter? May 1st. Remember? Is that what you're asking? Well, yes. My opinion. I'd have to reread the charter. Uh, this whole budget process calendar is going to have to be totally changed. Right. But they can see what ours was. This is the existing right. one. That's, that's, right. that's why we just we just uh, left it as is. Right. In fact, we have select board and so forth. Yeah, we should. But I'm sure it was made first. But it does it does say. I mean, they're just deadlines. That school committee is is going to be a one a later. Than, so they can do it earlier. Oh, they have to do it. So the school committee, the school, the library, the Amberson Regional Schools and the libraries have to be submitted by April 1st. So sometime between April 1st and May 1st. So April 1st, all those those entities have to give it to the town manager. And then by May 1st, the town manager has to submit it to the town council. Well, you know what? The regional budget, maybe the Amherst budget can be done that way. Regional budget is voted on <clears throat> in those towns either the last Saturday in April or the first Saturday in May. That's when they have their town meetings. I'm sure that's all going to get worked out. Oh, it has to be, obviously. I'm, but I'm saying that something they never inquired of. And, and they had people on there from the school committee, but right. no one but it ever. Doesn't mean he's going to do May first. It just says no later than May first. So. Right, but if if he it depends, and if he wanted to, he wouldn't have to do that. Except that it does impact the region. The elementary school is not an issue. Okay, anything else? So. What you're saying is that we will not have anything until the 16th. So there's after the 18th. I'm, after the 18th, I keep thinking. Okay, so you won't have anything until after the 18th. So there's, unless there's a need for a meeting on the 11th, something else comes up. I don't see any reason to meet. What's your thoughts? Well, last meeting is good. <laughs> we can go over. You can present your report to us. Really want to okay, for the minutes that no, he's deleted. <laughs> but there's nothing, right? No, I have nothing. Okay. So we can take off that FinCom, no meeting on the 11th. Right. But there's a four board meeting on the 18th, right. which we will not have uh, our guideline figures. I'm not going to be here on the 18th. In the draft. So now we're meeting on the, ooh, I can't meet on the 27th. I'm going to be in Las Vegas. I can't so meet I'll on be, the 25th. So wait, we are meeting on after the four boards meeting on the 18th. Right? Correct. Okay. We will have to meet then. And maybe we'll have to meet November 1st. They might be a couple days late. I can't be here on the 25th. Why don't we discuss that at the 18th? Okay, we can Because we will we'll have the three other people there too. Right. Hopefully. I would like I would like everyone to be at the meeting where we oh, approve the guidelines. I'm just assuming. So. And then we we can see what their calendars are like. Sure. Okay. 
we had usually kept Thursdays open, but there's a thing coming up at the Fine Arts Center. So, anything else then? <clears throat> no reports from committees. Very <laughs> sad. Okay. Why don't we talk about Monday? I never, I never got to go to the one thing I was <laughs> supposed to get to go to. Yeah, I'm pretty call. upset about that. Okay. Did you go to any meetings? No. I mean, because I'm on the same committee. There was only one. Oh, no, there was course. one. There was one, and I wasn't on the email list. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. What's going on here? it was canceled. Okay. Oh, the, the Regional School District Planning Board has met, uh, and we, we were a committee, and then we, we joined with Pelham, and we've been meeting every other week between Pelham and Amherst, and uh, this is to regionalize Amherst Elementary, just Thank Amherst, you. good night, Excuse Amherst me. Elementary with Pelham Elementary, which would be the pre-K to six. And um, and that's going very well. Joan Hempkin from Amherst and Peter Demling is the chair and he's from Amherst. And uh, Tom Fanning from Pelham, he used to be on the school committee. Uh, Kara uh, Castenson is the chair of the Pelham School Committee and she's on this committee. And Emily Marriott, who was on the Pelham School Committee, is um, is the secretary or vice chair of that committee, and myself. So it's six people, and they're going to uh, they're going to be forums to talk about the advantages uh, financially and educationally for the two towns to um, to regionalize. Uh, we did hear from <clears throat> the um, town council, and if we recommend regionalizing. Pelham has to vote at their town meeting, and Amherst has to have a townwide vote. Um, but cities and towns can regionalize. So, you know, when you look at the language, it's you know, state language is not easy. Law language is not always easy to decipher. But anyway, those a city and a town can regionalize. The question was, could they? So that's that's been resolved. So I think things are going very well. So Pelham would come to Amherst. No, um, or we would we join would... together. Okay. We would share. Right now, um, we're a union with Pelham. Right. But the finance director has to. He has a regional budgets that he keeps. Okay. He has an Amherst the whole budgets they keep, and he has Pelham. By regionalizing, Pelham and Amherst would be one district. Gotcha. And he would just have one set of books. I see. But, but the thing is that right now, Pelham already, um, their curriculum is the same mm -hmm. as Amherst. The teachers and the administrators are under the same, well, they're different contracts. Right. But the Pelham teachers are in the same union with the Amherst teachers. Okay. And administrators the same way. There isn't any differences, really. Uh, okay. Can you foresee uh, in the future a problem? like we have now with the, uh, the regional schools in the four different towns and everybody fighting over mm -hmm. what percentage people are, I mean, that's my only. Well, <clears throat> that would, that's part of the regional agreement and what you'd have to uh, agree to, but if you're one district, if that takes, well, there still has to be a regional agreement. So. Um, I would think the answer is yes. And that there would be a, both, the two towns, both Pelham and Amherst, would have to agree to the new regional school budget and one of the balks. Mm -hmm. And their percentage that the they're going to pay. Yeah. If that's how it's worked out. Oh, for yeah. taxes, I don't yeah. know how it's going to be funded. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right now, the elementary per pupil cost in Pelham is, at least by the state records, by DESE's records, they pay a couple thousand less per child than we do. But part of it has to do with the age of your faculty. I mean, you know, the and how long, not, I shouldn't say age, it should, it's the length of time someone is in the system. Like if you're there, you know, 40 years, yeah. your salary is going to be higher than someone just coming in. Right. So there are, I, I'm sure they can show those differences pretty easily. Um, but yeah, the, and I don't know how you protect the assessment method 
so that this doesn't happen. Right. You know, if there's some way you can say anyone who challenges this is the region is automatically dissolved. I, I have no idea. But we do have um, the uh, uh, Mark Abrams, who's the guru of regional finances. Um, he's our consultant mm -hmm. and doing the finances. And MARS, the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools, they are doing the consulting for process, mm -hmm. for um, the language, for an agreement, okay. uh, for governance, and all the other little issues that go along with regionalizing. And they're very good. And um, the main benefit to this is just cost savings? Uh, well, the one thing we don't get now, elementary schools do not get, um, is transportation right. money. Right. So that would bring in uh, right. 200, right. maybe 250,000 yeah. right. a year. Right. Um, initially, there's some money to regionalize. Mm -hmm. The other plus is that if you decide to build a new building, I believe it's a 6% bonus if you're a region. Oh, really? So 6% more that the state so will pay the toward course, their yeah. um, contribution to a new school. So there there are some advantages, yeah. certainly. Um, yeah, I remember Mike talking about this. It was kind of, like, really yeah, like, but I it's, the, but it's, it's a, the, the, the issue the would be... Yeah, that, that was the big one. I don't yeah. remember it being that much. I don't remember. It was like 300,000 or something. Number. Yes. Huh. It's so, a, it was very, what? It was interesting. For what? The transportation. Uh, Trend is about 250 to yeah, 70. Two, yeah, 250 yeah. to 300. What was the 15,000? Was that the smaller amount that for regionalizing? It could be. And the state had, now I don't know if they still do, but they had, I think it was a three year uh, payout. You know, you start higher and each year it became less. Um, but, you know, that's one time. And, I, and for a while they presented, well, you know, the region would get that money we get from Medicare or Medicaid. You know, it would come to the region. We said, well, that isn't any savings. You're just taking it out of the town pocket and putting it in the school pocket. So don't even count that. You know, people, people are smarter than that. They know that if it, you know, the town... Medicare Part D? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, what no. is it? It's Medicare, uh, Medicaid first and secondly. Yeah. So, you know, the town just won't get it, but the schools, but in essence, well, they get it now anyway, because we, we you know, um, allocate money for them. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's exciting, and it's worth looking at. And you're, you're right, the big thing would be the, the assessment. How do you avoid what's going on? And right now, you know, if you have a group of people that work well together, it's not an issue. But when you have people, there. that's right. When you have people who do not, then it is a, a real issue, and we're right back to the table now, uh, discussing the assessment. Because Amher said it would only do it for one year, the, the one that we're doing this year. Well, there's a governance question too. Oh no, I mean this is right now. They, the uh, regional agreement. Right, I understand that. But oh, if you well, no, this this then you have a school board that would be one school board rather than the whole school board and their school board. Uh, and there is some real yeah. sensitivity to the financial term. Yeah. But the big financial reason, I think, was because of the transportation. And in these days, we can use that term, 50,000. But I think that the people in Amherst, when you see 80% of at least the regional budget, this would be even a larger percentage, is is uh, appropriated by Amherst. And you only have 55% of the vote. And, you know, you know that, that doesn't set well with, with people either. So um, I think that's going to be an issue to be worked out with, with Pelham. Because they have, like, less than 100 children in their school, mm -hmm. and we have 2,000. And population-wise, too. Mm -hmm. So, but but I mean, they're they're they've been wonderful to work with. We've I think the meetings have gone very well, and uh, they're looking at a lot of things. So, Good. I'm hopeful. Okay. Good update. Okay. So, I uh, anything else? No. Nope. I'm assuming the minutes none. 
no, to, no new topics, so I move to adjourn. Uh, second. So moved. All in favor? There we go.